begin to encourage, popularize, and inculcate scientific temper among the children. Many schools organize science exhibitions every year where children showcase their talents in science and their application in different areas related to our everyday life. But the science exhibition held in Don Bosco School Panbazar on August 17 was more than this. Through this exhibition, Bosconians from class KG to class 12 have also proved as how teamwork could create wonder. Nearly 400 scientific projects or models focusing very interesting and grossing and relevant subjects were displayed during the exhibition. Principals of Don Bosco School Panbajar, Father Sebastian Matthew said that students of every classes were divided in different groups or teams. He said students did not choose their teams on their own, rather teachers created the teams. During the summer vacation last month, Members of different teams assemble at different places and work on the science project. Such engagement created a great spirit of teamwork and students, besides developing their talents, also inculcated many good human values, Father Sebastian said. Another important aspect of the exhibition was that all students of all classes participated, Father Sebastian said that the school did not select only the brilliant students for the exhibition. So, exhibition was an inspiration for all students to showcase their hidden talents. I'm pleased to school program for Every year we have a science exhibition of the in the sense of the compete with the KG to the class 12. So we have a general exhibition for KG class up to 12 months in a year. Last year, three years we could not have it because of the pandemic. So this year up we are having our three years. And one thing that we find that uh, this is an exhibition which is involves every student of the school. We have in group and we made in the three, four, five groups according to size of the class. And they are given a topic which is uh, what they are learning or what they are experiencing. So whatever they showcased in the classroom, so based on their knowledge and they with the help of the lower classes and the parents also have to help. The higher classes on their road, they make a lot of projects based on the mostly scientific temper of the class they showcase in the exhibition. And it is also not only just exposing or displaying their knowledge, but it is also one way of helping the students to work together. A team spirit is being created in groups of, it is not their choice of groups, it is their teachers put them into groups. So not by, uh, not by their choice. So it is, they are forced to work together, irrespective of what who they are, what they are. The weaker, the stronger, and the more better students and the weaker students can help support each other. And it is an effort made by the school in order to create also a sense of the scientific pressure that you should have in order to help the society, help the future of the society. Most of the projects and the things are based on the what is happening in the society at this moment. And the, also what is what we can contribute to make it better, the existing situation. So these are some of the things that we aim at by having this exhibition. Uh, approximately how many projects you have displayed? Per class, I think minimum of seven projects are there. Per class, per class means uh, per section. Right. So it is uh, each section is given seven, seven projects or six projects. So we have about 48 classes. So 48 into seven, right. a big, it's a big number. Big number. Big number. It is, we are not only looking at the number of projects, it's all also the quality of the project, but only we are given an opportunity for, for the college students to uh, at least make an effort to show what they are able to do to pull out the District Commissioner of Kamrup Metro, Pallab Gopalda, who visited the exhibition, said he felt nostalgic remembering his school days when he saw the science project. District Commissioner was impressed by teamwork of postponements. Came, visited, but, uh, makes me very nostalgic of our times when we were also in school. We used to have these exhibitions. And I'm very happy the tradition has been maintained even after 
25 30 years and it's very good to see all the children and with their various projects and more importantly the kind of teamwork they were putting in from last maybe 10 15 7 days that is something very important which provides a lesson in life and how to work as a team how to project an idea uh, so there's a lot of elements in personality development which adds to it and they have put a very beautiful show. I thank uh, Father Don Bosco, of Don Bosco and all the students and teachers uh, for putting up this kind of beautiful show and I wish them very good luck. Projects were made on various topics such as energy, machine, automobile, pollution, electricity, human habitation, converting plastic into useful materials. Students were very much enthusiastic and explained to everyone who visited the exhibition to understand their project. Well, uh, this is our model. We are group group two of uh, class 8B and our topic is uh, shifting cultivation and uh, my friend will describe it. Uh, describe it. So, shifting cultivation is a mode of farming which is practiced in many areas such as Southeast Indian subcontinent as well as in South America. It is very popular and is known by many names such as June cultivation and slash and burn agriculture. And it involves the following steps. In the first step, the cultivators cut the treetops on small pieces of land so that uh, there is adequate sunlight uh, on the land to, for humid conditions. In the second uh, step, the uh, farmers bar, uh, burn the treetops so that they can get the potash containing ash on which they can broadcast the seeds and cultivate the plants. But after continuous use of the soil, it loses its fertility and it needs to be replenished with nutrients. So, in order to replenish it with nutrients, farmers leave the soil fallow or uncultivated for some time. After leaving the soil uncultivated for some time, farmers continue this process on another patch of land. And after this, the original land regains its fertility, they shift back to it. Now, she will explain about the model. Nowadays, people are using more and more lights. This is leading to more and more light pollution. Now, light pollution is a topic very less people know about. Uh, about 82% of the people are not even aware of light pollution. They think as soon as they see our model, they ask, what is it? Because they do not know of it. Our model is here. Our whole exhibit just displays light pollution. It is to instill in people the awareness about light pollution and the causes and the effects and the solutions what can be done to light pollution. Our project basically shows how in the future we can use concepts and ideas on a large scale to make a day-to-day -day movement more convenient and fast-taking. This magnetic train, the magnetic train here, runs on magnetic energy. It has magnetic strips uh, on the track, on the train, they levitate and that, that's how they move. We've applied a motor to, make sh to show that it moves faster, but it will move either way. This is actually used in Japan. We, need, we don't have the capital to show here, of course. Then uh, we have sound energy. This, this one shows the real application of sound energy. And it's a modular application as a lighting of street lights. Like street lights. Hold it. At the night, due to the increased light intensity, the street lights will light up. So then the LDR resistor works very poorly, due to which they cannot light up. But at night time, when the light intensity is none, then the LDRs work properly due to which the street lights will light up automatically at night. So this is a real life application of sound energy. We can store and apply it in our real life. It will be very useful. Our topic is making of plastic roads. First of all, the plastic through our model, we are making sure how plastic can be constructed. Plastic roads can be constructed and it's a very eco-friendly and cost-friendly method. Plastic is put into a shredder, first of all, it's shredded into fine particles, then the mixture is heated up, you can see it right here, the plastic aggregate is heated up, the aggregate is then into a mixture so that the fine bonding of the particles is there. A mixture. On the other hand, here, a hot vitamin, which is like a complex product of tar, is also heated up, the mixture of our, the plastic aggregate and the vitamin is put together in the mixer, it's the mixture machine and this mixture can be used in the construction of roads. It's been already used in cities like Delhi, Chennai, the first city to implement this was Chennai. 
It's a very eco-friendly and cost-friendly product because the ratio of vitamin is getting reduced. Plastic clothes are more preferred than asphalt concrete clothes because plastic clothes have more wear resistance. They do not tear up like easily and they last more than asphalt concrete clothes. They also absorb the sound much better. So it is more of an eco-friendly way to dispose of plastic. At the end, Father Sebastian said that the science exhibition was organized keeping in mind the prime objective of the new education policy, which changes the way students learn. He said it is time to move away from the traditional approach of learning only from the bookish knowledge. The present policy of the new education policy we have, it is a policy that enables the students to learn as much as possible on their own, by their observation, by their interaction among the people. It is not more teacher putting something in the information of the students. Students themselves are capable of learning through their experience, their observation, what is happening in and around. And basing on that, they are able to develop a better knowledge of the subject matter or whatever is happening in the society, they are able to judge and evaluate those. So that is one of the things that is enabling this kind of project.